the final rounds of the 2019 bobsleigh and skeleton world championships the ibfsf fortnight comes to a conclusion here at the whistler sliding center with the denouement the blue ribboned event the final run of the four-man bobsleigh hello welcome back everybody i'm martin haven alongside me john morgan getting ready for the last run of the season and perhaps the biggest prize of them all and john tight battle on our hands team justin cripps well they started with third place overnight but on the bottom part of the track cripps was bringing it down looked like he was going to be within a couple hundreds but almost crashed in the famous 50 50 section of the track he's in third place good chance of still moving up at least one spot oscar keeper mattis his team set the track record at the start the day before track record at the bottom he was the first man out of the box but didn't post any kind of real great time He's in second place, chasing down, well, the guy who's won eight straight two-mans. He's won five four-mans. He's a double world champion from a couple years ago, the double Olympic champion from last year, but he's wounded. He's got a bad groin muscle. He's limping into this fourth run, but in the third run, he had the best time, Martin. He's a decathlete. He knows what pain's all about. He's got one heat to go on one of the most successful seasons ever in the history of the sport. But look at the margin, just a tenth of a second ahead of Oscar's keeper Manis, 2,500s ahead of Justin Cripps, and then about half a second back in the battle for fourth place. Maxim Anjanov, Benny Meyer, Mikhail Folks, look how close that is. Mika Valta in no man's land ahead of Yun Jong Won. Chris Spring moved up ahead of Johannes Lochner. Cody Baskew almost caught the German as well. Alexander Bradikin, Brad Hall, and the rest of the field. Our fastest 20 sleds go through. So it'll be Sun Kai Chi of China who leads us off as we go 20 to 1. Dominic Dvorak, Nick Polignato don't make the cut. Well, Oscars, Kiba Manis, the leader overnight. His best result in a four man world's a couple of tenth places, the last two in Innsbruck and uh, at Koenigsee. And what there's Francesco Friedrich with his trainer. Leo, get Leopold just trying to make sure that he is okay for some kind of a start. And John, his team will know from overnight that he's in problems. There's uh, Chris Spring. Yeah, so his team run. know, like Alexander Rödinger here, who set the start record with Andre Langer back in the games. It was eight, nine years ago, yeah. hard to believe. They, they know that they need to give him everything. And that's what they're racing for. The Martino Cup. Since 1931, they've been awarding this to the four-man world champions. Named after Hubert Martineau, the founder of the Samaritz Bob Club the founding fathers of the FIBT, the International Bobsleigh Federation, as was before it became IBSF. So here's our start order then. Sung Kai Chi, Billy Myerhans, Patrick Baumgartner, uh, Suk Yun Jin of Korea, and so on. We go in reverse order. Everybody trying to get the sled ahead of them while trying to hold off the sleds behind them. And that also applies to our leader, Francesco Friedrich, who goes last of all. Lots of noise at the top of the track for the final run of the season. The four-man bobsleigh world championships final. 20 sleds to decide our champion. First world championships for 22-year-old Chinese youngster Sung Kai Chi. And he's only 300 behind his closest rival. Hey, this is the Chinese. <laughs> Coached by Pierre Luders and Andre Langer, two former Olympic gold medalists. And the Chinese program is coming fast, Martin. We've had a lot of conversation with Pierre Luders. All these kids are under the age of 26, average age of about 22. Got some good track and field guys in the sport. But uh, Martin, he just wants his kids to get sled time, seat time. They've had two seasons of trips this year alone. Can't beat experience on the ice. It teaches you all that can be taught. Fastest start of the competition for them in this fourth and final run. They're giving it the full juice off the top. Just a little wild. Ooh, watch out, he hit the wrong spot there. He's okay. He's, yep. Yes. He's going to make it down four heats on this super speedway here in Whistler. Don't count it out until you're on the finish deck. You can even crash off corner 16. 51 52, Martin. Slower than his first tee time. Don't think we're going to see track records tonight. No. It's not been no. cold enough overnight or today, but the track record was crushed in this race 50, yesterday. 50-66 to 50-05. Look yeah. at that. Congratulations to 
Son for finishing his first world championships and Martin uh, the Chinese are coming oh. fast. Oh, he hauled it down uh, there. You can so. see the nose coming down. The tail was going up. Well, not bad into nine. Hey, Pierre Luders is very happy with the team of athletes he's assembled here. And he says they're going to get bigger. They're all a little skinny now. Much like, oh, look at that yeah, one. Yeah, big height there too. Much like the Koreans were f in about 2010-11. The Koreans, they got a little bigger by the time the games happened in 18. And of course, won an Olympic silver medal. Maybe the Chinese can do the same yeah. in three years. These guys are going to be on an accelerated program now into Beijing 2022. Three drivers in Billy Meyer hand sled. There's Billy, there's Jan Moulinier, and then there's the man on the back handles, Mikael Quonen. And all of them will be battling for places in Switzerland's World Cup squad next year. Billy's a throwback back to the 30 years ago. Raises all his own money. He's got good equipment. He's 45, 48 years old. He just goes out and competes in the Swiss Championships, keeps beating everybody. And uh, he's really developed. I mean, these three kids in the back are the future stars yeah. of Switzerland. We've got one more guy coming up who's in sixth place, too. He's doing pretty good. Michael yeah, Fulton. Absolutely. But getting brake men onto the driving program is exactly what they needed to do. Billy Myhan's 1400s up on Sung Kai Chi. Martin, he took two trips on this treacherous track. The first day of training, that qualified him for the race. He put the sled away. Just hung out for, you know, it's a pedestrian drive down the track. Gives these three kids a experience in the World Championships. And uh, Billy makes it down. Chinese look on. Well, that was nearly half a second. Four tenths quicker almost than the Chinese. 3,800s. So that's a, a nice trip for Billy Myerhans. 51.10 in the first heat today. 51.15 the first heat yesterday. 51.14 right now. He is a throwback. Yeah. You know, just no real four-man talent in Switzerland, so he takes advantage of it and he wins this sure Swiss driver sled. Yeah, and, and he's a big, he knows how to raise money. Yeah. Which you raise money, you buy your own equipment, you control your own destiny. Look at the lines. There's Those are some of the best lines we're going to see in the exit. There he's with Evo Ferriani, the president. <laughs> Throwback, baby. Billy my hands. Leads after our first two sleds. Next up is youngster Patrick Baumgartner from Italy. Youth Olympic gold medalist, uh, silver medalist, beg your pardon. No, I don't beg your pardon. It was a Youth Olympic gold medalist in 2012 in boys' bobsleigh. Now 24 years old. Mattia Variola and Alexi Achori Esso added to the sled just this week. I think this is Esso's first competition in the... Major competition. Yeah. He's a decathlete. Boy, is he a specimen. And we saw him come in for his headshot. That's the break. Man in the heart and Simone Batazzo, the coaches. You can also see the lots of athletes at the top from other teams, other sports, lots of skeleton sliders here watching the action tonight. 491. Speed of the on the left. Start time's one thing. The velocity is out of the curve one, 110 meters. That's how you get in the sled, sit down, and go around that first curve. Keep your eyes on that clock. Right, he's dropped behind Billy Myhans of Switzerland off the start. Billy's crew started 800 quicker. 491, it ties their best start for Baumgartner and the boys. Now they start to drive themselves into the lead. They were only 1,300s over the Swiss sled, and he's very late, and that's wiped out the advantage. Surely, when you get it that out of shape, it's down to 900s or out to 900s. He should just about. Brakeman pops up, only 1,100s at the time. Well, there is Billy and the crew. Nicole Cronin was on the right. Bob Gardner competes in his second World Championships, not at the Olympics last year. Simone Bertazzo qualified for. Italy, he's now retired and coaching the team. Yep. But here, Martin, a little late. And when you're late there, you cross over, do you tap? He taps a little bit on the take on, and then he goes late into this famous curve, 50 50, named after by Stephen Holcomb and the t night train crew in 2009. And boy, that, that was sketchy. That was close. That was that sketchy, was wasn't it? Yeah. Seeing that in replay, they got away with that, but not by much. Well, the track. Still not easy to tame, even at the end of two weeks of practice. Sukyun Jin of Korea, first world championships in a 
four-man sled. He raced before in the two-man in the world, but the former brakeman for Yun Jong Won combined braking and starting his driving campaign in 2015. Now, 28-year-old. Right, just take a look at some of these Koreans. Look at the quads on. Them. Yeah, that's, that's what the, the Chinese. On them that's what well. the Chinese are going to look like. They, they, yeah. These Koreans didn't look like that five, six years ago. Look at the quads, look at the legs. Driver coach Rico Peter, silver medalist on the track two seasons ago in four-man here. Now he's only 300 up on Patrick Baumgartner. Good, good. Start time, 45. This velocity, the best velocity. That was a great load. Nice quiet hands for Suk Yun Jin. Martin, we've got Korean, Chinese. And we heard today that there's a Filipino team yep. practicing in Calgary. Well, that's one of the advantages you're having a track like Calgary. It's a good track for learners. Well, They've got a start house. You can live easily in the city and access Martin. those facilities. Martin, it's teams from Asia. Yeah. It used to be just Japan for the first 80 years of the sport. Oh, he's a little late. late. Oh, he gets away with it. He knew the danger, got it under control before he got to 50-50. Ten hundreds should be enough. Coming right down. Will he be in front? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Here's Rico Peter. Yeah, he's their he, driver coach. Yeah, and his sled's coming up with the Swiss sled that's in sixth. That might so, be the fastest sled in the field. After three heats, they were 300s ahead of Patrick Baumgartner. They set exactly identical times. They finished the world's 300s ahead of Patrick Baumgartner. This is 12. Ooh, he got off there too quickly. Watch the direction change on the sled. Yeah. Then he comes over here and, you know, decides to really steer hard there. Watch the articulation. Had no Split. option. That was pretty good. That was not such a stressful run as yeah. we thought. But he'd given all the speed away with that big swoop and the panic steer in hey, the middle of the corner. they're throwing one down. Yeah. And a uh, trophy. Know, if you don't use your helmet on the ice here in Whistler, you've had a pretty good fortnight. 22-year-old Hunter Church hasn't had a bad season either. World Cup debutant in the North American races. Did the two-man race that he was not expecting to when Justin Olsen crashed in day one of training. First World Championships, he was expecting to drive the four-man. And here he is, lying in 16th place. 22-year-old from Katyville, New York, not far from Lake Placid. Father Tom is a bobsitter. Father Tom, my brother Sean, coached the little peewee program where Hunter came out of, where Cody Baskew was coming up, came out of, and Jeff Gadbois, all three U.S. drivers under the age of 24. Hunter and the two sleds in front of him are covered by just 12 hundredths of a second. That's one error, and not even a big one on this track. 45 hundredths ahead of Sook. Now the gap's coming down a little. Huge lead here, but this is about moving up. Yep. Hunter's just a great 22-year-old on this track. Of course, he's got experience on this track from the North America Cup. Definitely Boy. nothing like as much, though, as the front runners. Because driving he just doesn't have ice time. Martin, you say he's 22 and he's young, but he's been driving yeah. for about eight, ten years. Bob oh, little oh. skid across the line. Great run, 51-13, fastest so far of the heat. There you go. Looking over at the clock. He will be hey. no worse than 16th. Congratulations, Hunter Church. First World Thanks Championship, two men and the four. Yeah, his target was to catch the next couple of sleds let's see if he's done enough wasn't bad out to one avoided the hit on the wall and again that little tap up top that, tiny that's tap. very costly runner tips real quiet exit down on the gold rush exit part of the track where the super speedway hits 95 miles an hour while hunter was going 94.9 that time Korean friends and rivals. The uh, USA moves into the leader's box. Five sleds down, 15 to go. Final 15 sleds to the FIBT, uh, B BMW IBSF four-man bobsleigh world championships. Lamin Dean in 15th place for Great Britain. The 37-year-old Grenadier Guardsman with 22-year-old Ryan Letts, 28-year-old Tremaine Gilling, and 31-year-old Toby Aluby behind him. Look at the size of Toby on the back. Look. Took a silver medal here in the last World Cup race just over 12 months ago in oh, four-man Lamin. 17th, 11th, and then 17th again. Now, Lamin won a silver medal on this track a couple years ago. Last season. Had the track record, a speed record. 
was shattered last night, which unbelievable bobsleds are coming at 96.9 miles an hour. That's also finished fifth in Winterberg in the four-man world championships in 2015. This is a very different sled. This is owned by the Joint Services Sliding Association. It's a McLaren-developed sled that was built for 2014 that so far nobody has really been able to get the best out of. Ooh, right there. Wait means he's just not staring. See what he does down here in the signature part of the track. Dab's coming down. He was only 500 to head of Hunter Church after the first three heats. This is going to be very close at the line. Going to be right to the 100. 1700s to 700s. Two. Two. Two hundreds. And somebody's head popped up before they got to the line. If they'd lost by 100, that would have been the difference. Boy, they didn't get the brakes on. They're way up the track. Now they're coming back. They better stop the sled here. There you go. So who popped up before they got to the finish line? It might have been Toby Aluby on the back. It might have been Tremaine Gilling at three. That's a pretty big pop-up. If it's Toby, yeah. look at the size yeah, of that There's too. a lot of him to pop up. Okay, this is down into the long chicane into 10. Climbs, look at the back end skid there. So a lot of steering. Then he, centrifugal force brought him back up on the outlet, a little flop down. Then down in the 13, the signature part of the track. Look at the runner tips. You can see he didn't do that much steering there, Martin, and he came off a little late. The crossover into 15. There's big Toby Luby at the front of the shot. So Lamentine moves into the leader's box with 14 to go. And the sled in front of him was only 700 ahead after three runs. This is Xiao Yi Jun, our second Chinese athlete in the field. The better placed of the pair, again, like his teammate Sun Kai Chi, the 24 year old in his first World Championships appearance. Again, look at the frames on these athletes. And remember, the Koreans who just came down, and the Koreans that are coming up. Pierre says we got to get all my guys in the weight room. That's Pierre Luder's the coach. They look like sprinters, don't they? Well, the guy in the back, Ma, is a 21.40 200 meter sprinter. Pierre likes him. Not a head movement as a break. But watch him get in number two weights for the number three guy to sit out. Cohesive. 484. Velocity in the left. Tells you how they loaded three, but he tapped there in the exit of one. Tap. Points coming down. They're only 700 ahead of current leader Lamin Dean. Lamin was pretty good in the second run yesterday. He was just pretty good in the second run today. Outstarted the British crew by one hundredth of a second. Hard to All three hundredths of a second in it. They're losing ground to Team GB. That's because of the problems up the first two and three. And he's got it back under control now, though. Try and extend his advantage. The Walmart sleds, six hundredths. Here we go. He's going to take the lead at the line. He will finish no worse than 14th place as he takes over in the leader's box from Lamindine. Mark, the Chinese are in 14th place at the World Championship. Yep. We are three years out from the Beijing Olympics. I think the South Koreans have built the sport for us. Listen to it. China. Great Britain have been sliding bobsleds in the 1930s. China since 2017, 16. These mistakes up top, and then he, down below though, Martin, the sled flew. Good aerodynamic profile by the athletes. <laughs> Again, the only thing I can say is, if you see these same athletes a year from now, they're going to be bigger. Yeah. Quads. <laughs> what did Lolo go? Jones always tell us when she came from sprinting? She said, I love this sport. You can eat as much as you like, and then you can go back for more. And that's what they'll be doing, because you burn it up in the weight room and on the track. Well, Great Britain just lost the lead to China. Can Great Britain take the lead back? This is Brad Hall, the 28-year-old driver in his third world. Nick Gleason at two, Joel Fearon, and Ben Simons return to uh, top-level action at three and four. Had a little problem at the start, and Nick Joel Fearon ran too far in the previous heat. He's the guy on the right. Well, Coming at us, right here on the right. Let's see how quickly they get in the sled quicker this time. Yes, Ferron still with two more steps, and look at that, the same thing. I think Joel Ferron just ran too many steps. And rocking and rolling, they haven't had much race experience either, but good velocity, 
We'll see 64.3 or 4 from the fastest sled. Brad had a horrendous crash up here three years ago, severed all the tendons in his hand. Big scar there. Brad says that, uh, you know, it took him about eight weeks to get back into a sled after numerous surgeries. But Mark, uh, he's got the DNA of a bobsled. Yes, he has, and he finished in fourth equal with Chris Spring in the two-man competition, so he had a really good opening week. 2700s, he's going on to double his advantage over Xiao Yi Jun of China, 3100s out. Martin, he's one of the many decathletes in the front seat of, these, uh, of this field. There's four more athletes coming up at least that are four more drivers that are decathletes. 5101, that is 300 slower than their last trip, but that's a big step forward towards catching Alexander Bredikin of Russia. Only 300 slower, and pretty consistent. Yeah, last the second, third, and fourth heats is 5103, 5088, 5101. But watch fair and watch the sled. Now, see the runners, these push too far because that energy that he was putting pushing the sled didn't give Brad Hall enough time to get in there, get a hold of those D rings. And Martin, any kind of variance like that at the start is definitely costly. Yeah, energy that pushes the sled sideways isn't helping it accelerate. So Brad Hall takes the lead with 12 to go in the final run of the four-man bobsleigh world championships. Alexander Bredikin of Russia, first World Cup season, first world championships for the 23-year-old. And those steely blue eyes have been looking pretty apprehensive all, uh, all the fortnight. He crashed in two-man and four-man training. This is teammates from the women's crew. The last four races on this track, the Russians have won them all. Yep. Previous to that, Steve Holcomb won two, and a Latvia. So the Latvia, USA, and Russia, the only ones to win four-man races on this track. Hard to believe they haven't mentioned the German. Yeah. Might be or a Canadian. 481. That's a good start. All right, so he 200s of that 900s gap has gone at the start. Let's see what he can do. Pretty impressive, Mark. Three crashes, I think he's had to a man in the four man of training. And, you know, just keeps coming back every day. Crashed two of his first three trips down this mountain last week in the two man. He'd never raced here before. And that's got to shake your confidence. He looked a bit haunted. Same as his teammate Lubov Chanik in the women's race. I think he's got his confidence back. Now took two tenths up over Brad Hall. Hey. And first. he's going to take the lead, isn't he? He's going to finish 12th at least in his first ever Worlds. And yeah, that's a good result. Martin, that's a yeah. good result. The Russians are looking at him. He was pretty impressive in Europe. He was consistent. He knew where he was going. He knew what he was doing. He just doesn't have any run volume on this track whatsoever. And like Lubov Chernik, thrown in at the deep end. And this is the deepest of deep ends. The first heat, we were going at speeds that no bobsledder had ever done down this track. Yeah, Martin, he finished eighth in World Cup points with yeah. a couple eighth-place finishes early in the season. For a rookie, he's had a great year. His, his season is through and down here at the sliding center. The only time he's out the top ten was in Calgary, another track he'd never raced at. So Alexander Pratik in there with the blonde hair and the gray eyes. I think we're going to see a lot more of him. He's got age on his side. So too is Cody Baskew of the USA, just 24 years old, a boy from Whitehall, New York. Fourth World Championships for him in the four-man sled. Baskew from nearby Lake Placid, Whitehall, New York. Williamson's a Florida guy. James Reed, well, he was born and raised as a military guy. His parents are from Birch's Garden. Chris Kinney's a sprinter from Georgia. Chris Kinney was on Hunter Church, his two-man sled. 76, 78, 81. So they've been losing a couple hundreds in each heat. Let's see if they can get into 76. 78, that's great. The advantage uh, is 1700s over Alexander Radikin. And great first corner speed, 36, 8, 63, 8. Same as Brad Hall's crew from a slightly quicker start. He's the oldest of the U.S. drivers at 24. That's yeah. unbelievable. Usually U.S. drivers are 30, 33 years old. They kicked him out of the Pee Wee program at Lake Placid. Got a 12, though. Ooh, Ooh, that's a big, big change of direction. Yeah, you'll feel that in the back seat. Still the leader. 800s, though. Has to be perfect here. 
Good speed here in the bottom through the gold rush. Down to four, straight to the hundred. Fast is still at the bottom. He needs that speed from the sled, and 100. he gets it. Wow, but that was close. And again, Woo. somebody started sitting up before the line. Hundred. They know where they are on the track, but it's really crucial to get the brakes on early here. The outrun is so fast. Wow. Yeah. Losing time all the way down, Martin. He yeah. had uh, 18, 20 hundreds lead to start, 18, 12, 8, 4, and then one at the bottom. This was yeah. a real time changer there. Pitched him in sideways, knows the sled still climbing. Hard to get these big sport utilities in trouble, but when they do, it's hard to make them go in the direction you want. Nice off 50-50. That's what kept the speed alive that he needed at the bottom of the track. Hunter Church's sled doing 94.9 miles an hour. Cody Bascu leads. We're halfway through the final run of the 2019 BMW IBSF four-man bobsleigh world championships. Ten sleds down. The fastest ten still to go to decide our winner. Crowd assembling here. Whistler, spectacular venue if you've never not been out here before. The downtown is just uh, one of the best alpine resorts I've ever been in. It's so, so compact, isn't it? Everything is sort of focused around the, the Olympic Plaza and the Skiers Plaza in the middle of town. Makes it a really fantastic place. Walking around today in the sunshine, you bumped into bobsledders and skeleton athletes and coaches all over the place. Yeah, and this track that they've built here, this, you know, what Daytona is to uh, auto racing, Talladega, this is to bobsledding. This is some super speedway, and we've lowered the track record in women's bobsleigh by six tenths, yep. four man bobsleigh by six tenths, men's, women's skeleton. Just how low can you go? It's hard to believe. We're at 50.05 in the, in the four man. We thought we might be getting under 50 seconds, but got too warm overnight, Mark. Well, we'll have to wait and see what the leaders do. And Temperatures dropping, a little bit of wind will help to keep the track cooled as well on the surface that the runners touch because the cooling comes from deep inside the concrete shaping of the track so you have to refrigerate the concrete and that then keeps the ice frozen but of course the outer surface is the one that's exposed to the air and there's your leader box Katie Baskew second from left Jimmy Reed on the right hand side from Garmisch Partenkirchen now there's a track that had world championships in its day as well had a natural track. Ten sleds down, ten to go. The final run of the 2019 BMW IBSF Four Man Bobsleigh World Championships. And first up, and this is unusual, is our reigning world champion, Johannes Lochner, the 28 year old from Bavaria, at the bottom of the top ten. Well, he's getting great starts. 4.76, last run. 4.76 here, watch the velocity. The turn is not bad, best velocity expected. He's almost tipped over curve four, five, coming up right here. It's not one, it's not two, it's not three here. Here it it's comes, exit watch of right here. Four. He's got a block, net. well, he got through there finally. Right, but boy, the first tee, he almost tipped over there. And Martin, he was angry in the second run. Tipped, oh. Almost tipped over the third run again. All through two-man week, all through four-man week, every run but that one, he has messed up four to five. Now then, how far might that allow him to climb up the order? Maybe two or three sleds, maybe four. This is what you expect out of the guy who won the World Championships in 2017. Tied to the hundredth of a second with his teammate. 50.70. That's his best run of the competition. Really? This is not the fastest ice. No. Now Hansi shakes his head. And Florian Bauer there leaning over. Finally, Hansi, after all those trips, 18 trips down there's the his, track. There's his brother right there on the right. Yeah. <laughs> finally, <laughs> finally got to curve four.
Oh, one time. There hey, you go. That's what this track will do to you. The best in the world, right to your knees. He's had two. I can't believe he made it either one of those trips. Yeah. And this was it. This is down at 7, 8. Hug, probably hugged the left-hand wall all the way down. That's the norm. And then, boy, that little tip at the end, though, when the <laughs> nose goes down, you got to watch out for that. And here in the finish, look at the aerodynamics. Is it? Oh, somebody comes up too is. quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all yeah, popping, yeah, up popping up before up. the line. That's 100. Oh, oh, all right, yeah. Hansi, finally, one good run. So, Hannes Lochner leads with nine to go. Now, he was only 300s behind Canada's Chris Spring. Only 1100s behind Yun Jung Won, the Olympic silver medalist. The spring's going to give up some time here at the start, 46 or so. A spring a tie for fourth with Brad Hall in the first heat. I wonder if we're going to have another tie in this one. Well, but this guy here knows how to bring the sledge down the track. Ooh, drift there. That's definitely going to cost him. Cable, two and three. Gave away a tenth of a second at the start alone. 1400s. He gets this down to single digits here at the next clock. He's got a chance to do it on the box. Lockner's got the highest speed at all four speed traps down. Ooh, the no way. Now. He might get it down to the teens, but Lockner just smoked it. Something we expected him to do in three heats, not just one of four. Springs nearly three kilometers an hour shy on top speed, a full mile an hour. Lockner was doing 95 dead at the bottom. Spring 93.5. Good exit, but not enough. Fourth. So, yeah, they move up there. Yeah, uh, you know, this is the world champions <laughs> from two years ago. Yeah. yeah. He tied Francesco Friedrich in Koenigsee, Bavaria. Springer has won on this track before in two man, Bob. There it is. He's finished. Yeah. Clears over. Neville right. Well done, Neville. Well done, Neville. Ten years since he started his career on Just this gave his track. Away. Thanks, Canada. That's everyone. He sold his spikes and everything else. He said he will never, ever ride in the bobsled without his burns vest, no matter what else. He said, I'll go butt naked. I will not ride without a burns vest or a helmet. Big never right. Thank you. Ten years of valiant service. Retired a couple of times to look after the family, go back to school. Trained as a physio. So we may yet see him back on tour. Pure bobsledder. Yeah. And he is a beast. Okay, so Chris Spring drops behind Johannes Lochner. Next up is Yun Jung Won, the Olympic silver medalist a year ago. Now, Yun Jung Won in eighth place. Very vulnerable, I think, to Hansi Lochner moving up. So Martin has got the 11th best start in all three runs, 480 or so, probably a 482 here. Just very similar, best start of the competition yeah. right there. Very similar to the where he placed while we tapped there, what he did last year at the Olympics. He had the 10th, 11th best starts, but the silver medal was an electrifying medal, and you know, this guy is a legend in Asia, and you know, we have Chinese here. We heard about, we talked about it before, there's a Filipino team training in Calgary, so this guy might have just taken the sport of bobsledding and thrown it. Yeah, the in Japanese Asia. have been part of the bobsledding and sliding fraternity for a few years. They're absent at the moment. His English has really improved too, yeah. Mark. We've talked about that. Only 1100s oh, up, though, on oh, Lockner. This is going to be close. Lockner has the best speed. 95 he's away now, 94 8, that's enough. Your top one will lead. Wow, wow. 50 wow. points six, at the bottom. Whoa, he's only 100 there. No, he's 50 63 in the first run, 50 67 in the last run. Boy, he is precise. Yeah. Everything he does is almost exact. Eighth and tenth fastest on the first day. Eighth fastest on the third trip down. And he will end up no worse than eighth. Well, Hannes Lockner of Germany moved up, but he couldn't overhaul our Olympic silver medalist, Korea's Yun Jung Won. The 33-year-old in his fourth world championships. Yeah, that hard hit before 10. But Martin is, he accelerated on the bottom very yeah. well. Yeah, he's got the top speed. 95.9 miles oh. an hour, 154.3 kilometers an hour. He's won before on this track at two-man top slide. Yeah. There's Johannes, the yeah. first to congratulate him. He won the first race, tied for victory, the first race after Malcolm Loy passed away, their former coach. 
Nika Valter next up, 28 years old. Olympic silver medalist, tied with Yun Jung Won of Korea. Philip Fabeto stepping in at the back of the sled for the injured Eric Franker overnight. Oh, replacement went from the seventh and sixth best start time the first day. The replacement comes in at the fifth best start, 480 in the third run. Maybe 480 Eric, again. Maybe German Eric precision. Yeah. German precision. There, you bring a guy off the bench like that, and they get better starts. But a little wavering out of curve one from the guy who won a silver medal at last year's Olympic Games. He tied the Korean Won to the 100th. But to have him back here in seventh place, by Bronze medalist, last race on this track as well. Behind Lamin Dean and winner Alexander Kashinov of Russia. Ooh. It's a bit hard into corner nine. Ooh, he's getting away from him a bit. Come Got on, Nico. Korean was good ship. down here. He's only 800 ahead of Yun Jong-won for the first heat. They tied in the Olympic Games. Are they going to tie again? No! no. 900. Wow! He lost nearly two tenths of a second in the final couple of Boy, 200 meters. All Nico could talk about was getting to the World Championships. He's been nursing a hamstring most of, most of the year. Just didn't come together for him. Well, he got a bronze medal in the two-man. Yeah, yeah, out of nowhere. And the four-man was what he was waiting for, and it's just not He's happened. Right. Hard hit. Watch the nose. No, the nose doesn't go down either. Climbs high there, though. Yeah. Ten. And a big skid into corner ten. This and is coming off it into 11. Does he get knocked away? 50-50 curve. Too bad. Runner tips. Oh, that's a lot of steering right there. And that's where the speed went. Yeah, yeah. A lot of steering right there. Hauls it off there. And the 400 hey. meters later, there's no speed left in the sled when he needs it. Before we get done, we're going to see people not steering like that, just letting it go for the speed. Yun Jong Won is our race leader. Seven, six to go as we get to 21-year-old rookie Mikel Vogt. Second year of driving, former gymnast and shot putter, and look at the consistency in the top six on every run. Last race in the, in this, on this track, this sled won the silver medal. 480, that'll work. That's their best start of the four. Well, they Velocity's know good. that can, they can take a top six finish here, and that's going to be a huge achievement. Mark, their top six sleds are separate, are six different nations. I've never seen that in four-man bobsledding. Usually there's at least a couple Germans up there. Last World Championships two years ago, he was still a track and field athlete. Good exit there. This 21-year-old guy. I mean, the, you, if he gets down here, he You're is gonna... half a second up on the Olympic silver medalist with the other Olympic silver medalist. Wow, this is wow. the future for Switzerland. Mikel Vogt will finish no worse than sixth position in his first ever world championship. Watch the coaches. Look at, look at these guys. Come on. <laughs> Christoph Langen, three gold medals in his career. Wolfgang Stomper, the former Austrian. Look at, listen to these guys. Yes. Bravo. Youngest guy in the field. There's a trophy they hang out, hand out for the rookie of the year in the World Championships. Martin, I gotta believe it's gonna be this guy. The trophy's been around since 1961. Look at the lines. Remember, we saw the steering yeah. from uh, Nico Walter. There wasn't any steering there. He let it go. Yeah. He's got good driving instincts. Hasn't he? And How he has had great speed. Him? I know. He's got. Of course, he's got that speed sled, too. How do they find him? How do you get a shot push and go, hey, you're going to be a great bobsled driver? How do they find them? Mikkel Vogt leads ahead of two Olympic silver medalists, the final four, five sleds in the four-man bobsleigh world championships. Well, if Mikkel Vogt is a surprise, perhaps Benny Meyer is less so in a four-man. Injured all season, hadn't raced a four-man since before Christmas, so he's desperately short on ice time, but in fifth position, 100th ahead of the rookie of the championships, Mikkel Vogt. This could go either way. 4.79, that's good. This is a very... Experience five year five world championships and he's 24 years old, Mark. Yeah. But he's been nursing that hamstring, as you said. Silver medalist in Youth Olympic Games back in 2012. 
best result for him, fifth place on home ice in Innsbruck 2016. Last week's only Olympic Games, a World Championship gold medal, Ingo Appelt in 1992 in Alperville. 100th up on votes over three runs. That's now out seven. to nine and coming back down to seven. The Swiss ladies very quick. Can Benny hang on? Down to one, I don't think so. One hundredth of a second. Mikael Vogt might just move in front. He does. The Swiss move up. Benny Meyer will be no worse than sixth. Still a great finish for Meyer. Disappointing. The coaches wanted him to finish at least fifth or fourth. Yep. Where well, he got leapfrogged by Maxim Anginov. And now he's been leapfrogged by Benny Meyer. Look at all the support down the side of the sled. Top name, Bob Team Friedrich. Well, hard to believe, hard to figure out where you lost it, Mark. That's down the left hand wall. We've seen everybody do that. He didn't hit, and it, the nose go down on the belly of the curve. Here he looked a little late off 11. 12, little dive there. How much steering is, is he doing, 13? I'm sure they'll show us that picture right here. Take a look at the runners. Not too much steering. Great aerodynamic pose. Well, he knows how to drive a sled, no doubt about it. There's his wife, Liz. She finished 10th in the women's skeleton event for Canada. Now we're getting some serious. Oh, yeah. Now then. Four sleds remain in the season. Max Mandrilov of Russia, second world championships in four man. His best result last time out in Koenigsegg. He finished in eighth spot. 41 start, 480s probably, 479, 478. They get their best start of the, no, 477 the first run. Velocity, the best velocity. Mark, we've mentioned the last four races on this track have been won by Russians. Yeah, they had two one twos in 2011-12 and 12-13 with Zubkov ahead of Kazinov. Kazinov took over as the winner after the games in Sochi. Oh, oh that's going to cost him. Very skiddy. That could be down in single digits at the next clock. 2400s up on Mikhail Vogt of Switzerland. No, actually pulled away. Hanging on. So is he going to it? Right. He's just... Oh, no, is he letting it fly? Let it go. Final run, win or bust. Win it or bin it, he is going to be fourth hey, he's in had the a World great, Champions He's here. had a great season, breakoffs, or come out season. Yeah. Fifth in World Cup rankings, couple fourths, one medal in Lake Placid. But he's got to accept this. He's going to be super excited with that. Alexei Zaitsev at two, Vasily Kondratenko at three, Ruslan Samitov at four. Big starts, and he really drove well, Maxim Anginov and it's not impossible that he might end up in the medals. Oh, this is Luder's loop. How's the exit here? Look at this, he's trying to get through there, but you know, that was a lot of skidding. Hard to get these, I call them sport utilities, the two mans or sports cars, runner tips. No steering, hardly, a little bit there at the end, but yeah. that's hanging it out, Mark. Yeah. Letting it go. I think he was just giving it everything. Either they're the fastest or they're going to crash out. They lead with three to go. From Summerland, British Columbia, the international man of mystery, Justin Cripps. Eighth worlds for him, sixth as a driver. He lies in the bronze medal position. The final heat of the four-man. In the second best start, 475 in the first run. It's the number two guy wait. They're all in and down. Great 475 load. again, should be the best velocity. It's not six best velocity. So something happened in that curve, or Cripps took too much of the curve. He almost crashed down on the 50-50 curve in the third run, Martin, or he'd been in second easy. Second fastest in the first heat, third fastest in the next two, so he lies in third spot. He's 2,500 off the leader. He needs the drive of his life down this track. He gets to the bottom, he's got at least a bronze medal. 31 hundredths. Never been on a four-man world championship podium before. Best was sixth in Koenigsegg last time out. This is a really this good is run. A medal. Cripps is going to be in the medals. At least a bronze. My son got a bronze. Oh, my son got a bronze. There you go. We had lunch today with his mother and father. Yeah. Nice one. 
so Justin Cripps, Ryan Summer, Cam Stones, and Ben Cokewell. Yes! Cokewell there crashed and injured in two man training with Cripps. Uh, Cam Stones stepped in. I didn't like this exit here. Yeah, that this was a is lot of that corner. That corner, he got too much of that curve, but didn't bottom part wall. of the track. He didn't have any problems with the 50 50, which he crashed there in two man training right here. Look at the runners, some steering on the exit. Good aerodynamics. Yeah, look at the smooth. Crossover. Yeah. Went below the track record in the very first trip in training with a full race start from the crew, laying it on the line. Here we go. So two sleds to decide our world champion. Overnight leader, Oscars Kubermanis of Latvia. Has never finished higher than 10th in a world championship to the four man. This is his fifth world. Never won an event, although he finished second in the World Cup points this year. A tenth of a second. Five podiums. the lead. And broke the start record. Yeah. With a 469 push in the second run last night. Broke the track record. 469. Wow. Nice. Watch the exit. Clean. Best velocity. Martin in the... Innsbruck World Championships three years ago. The Latvians were in second place, posted the best time, waited for Francisco Freaker to come down. They couldn't match him. And Oscars Mel Bartis won the Latvians' first ever World Championships. Could this be deja vu? 2200s. This is very smooth. Ooh, that's late there, as soon as you said that. 1500s over Justin Cripps from three heats. It's down coming to down. 1800. Cripps was good down here. Cripps might move up. Could be close. Out of 15. 15. Thunderbirds. It's enough, isn't it? He's going to be at least a silver medalist. Head comes 16. up early. Wow. 100 quicker than Justin Cripps on that run. Cripps wow. was only 300 quicker than Maxim Anginov. The track Another is just about holding up. Another decathlete in the front seat. There's no one more decathlete in the front seat to come down yet. Keeper Manis never finished better than 10th in the World Championships. That's his first ever World Championship medal, Mark, yeah. in 2 or 4. Oscars Keeper Manis, Mattis Miknis, Arvis Bilkaster, and Yanis Stranger, whose young son is hopefully watching at home in Latvia in the wee small hours of Sunday. Oscars Melbardis, the winner in Innsbruck. 2016. Ten came up there a little early yeah. for a hundredth, maybe. If it's won by a hundredth again, we may see that as being the reason. Now this guy here, the driver, is wounded, Mark. Yeah. Uh, he's not springing around on the balls of his feet. He often doesn't. He always starts planted on the front handle. Let's see how early Francesco Sluja gets in. The two-man and four-man Olympic and world champion going for another four-man goal. 76, 75, 74. That's unbelievable. Wow. Told well, me he pulled his groin muscle in the first heat, last step. And that's why he had such a bad curve, one to two. There's a skid there, too, yeah. though. He's giving it everything for this gold medal. He always does, but he's laid his body on the line. Four to five's a little rocky. Watch What's out for the tenth up is... How far? 16, he's pulled away. All right. Yeah. Guys, one... Eight to me, races. Don't forget Mary Amiamanka, the final run, nearly crashed in 50-50, went on to take gold. He's letting the sled have its head. It. He's out of the danger zone. He's accelerating away. Just like last year, he won double gold at the Olympic Games, and he wins double world championships here in Whistler. He goes away. <laughs> the fastest run of the heat, as he was in the heat two and heat three. Legend. Francesco Friedrich. Double gold at home in Koenigsee in Bavaria. Double gold now here Mark. in Whistler. And double gold in the Olympics in between. We've got to look up on the wall here. Has anybody ever done double gold three straight years? No. Oh. Oh, there's only two names, Andre Langer and Christoph Langen. If we look beyond them, it's unlikely. Oh, no one. Ah, Langen might have done. Oh, look at the boys. There is Friedrich. The bearded Martin Grotkop, the huge man, Torsten yes. Margis. Yes, Martin, yes. There's Torsten, has won all but one of his titles with him. The first two-man title is with a different brakeman. Well, Martin, you wouldn't know. I mean, it's 
He said he was in a lot of pain in that first two. Wait till he, he walks know. away onto the finish dock, though. Wait till he cools down in five minutes. <laughs> but, you know, Martin, he's chasing oh, down Eugenio Monti. It's, you know, what he's accomplished at this young age. His sixth world championships, Francesco Friedrich is again double two-man, double four-man world champion and Olympic champion. He's not been beaten in either discipline in three straight years of top-level four-heat racing. Martin, I keep saying, I've seen them all. Monty, I've seen Hiltebrand, I've seen Cher, I've seen Niemer. I've seen Vader, Hoppy, Longa, Lion. He's one of the most humble athletes I've ever met. Yeah. And Francesco Friedrich, behind after the first heat, beats Oscar Smelbardis by 29 hundreds. Justin Cripps in third, the bronze medal for the Canadian. Maxim Andronov in fourth, ahead of Mikhail Vogt, the young sensation of these world championships. And Benny Meyer rounding out a season of injury and frustration with a great top six finish. Those are the top 20 finishers in the BMW RBC four-man bobsleigh world championships. We need a better thesaurus. There are not enough different ways of describing just how good Francesco Friedrich is now much more perhaps he might achieve. You can see uh, some of the crew going over to greet friends and family. There's Torsten Vargas. Gives Candy, Candy Bauer a big hug. As the boys all get their warm weather clothing on. This isn't Calgary, it's not minus 27. But they are still hot. And they will cool down quickly. Appreciate it with that abductor strain. He needs to make sure but uh, he keeps that warm until he can get some more treatment. Well, Cripps' Canadian crew are down there with friends and family. They're in the trapper's hats. And as ever, Queen of the Dock, Hester Zinga, will be nailing jello to the ceiling, herding cats, trying to get all the athletes back into the four-man leader's box. We'll see their presentation of the flowers to our top three. Who else should we pick out? Well, Benny Amaya undoubtedly will have been frustrated with a season that saw him tear his hamstring early in the year and miss half of the races. He did the first four of the season sitting in in Koenigsegg in two-man and four-man. He hasn't raced in a sled since early January, and now the first week of March. And that is a real handicap for a bobsledder at this level. You have to have time on the ice. You've got to be race fit as well as physically fit. But ahead of him, Mikel Vogt in fifth position. Fantastic worlds for him. Started driving at the beginning of last season. Maxim Andrinov in fourth, fourth position. Another big result for him. confirmation of the 2019 BMW IBSF four-man bobsleigh world championships in Whistler, Canada. Francesco Friedrich, the champion. Oscar Smelbardis, the silver medalist. And Justin Cripps taking bronze ahead of Maxim Anginov, Mikhail Vogt and Benny Meyer. Well, Friedrich coming from behind after the first heat was always going to be a threat for Oscar's Cuba Manis, the overnight leader. And Friedrich does not allow other people or his own body to get in his way. With an adductor strain from the first heat to the four-man, he's still with his team, dug in deep, produced competitive fast starts and blew down the track. He was the two-man and four-man world champion two years ago in Koenigsee in Germany. He was the two-man and four-man Olympic champion a year ago in Pyeongchang, Korea. And in a third different continent, he is a two-man and a four-man world champion. And that alone, I think, possibly marks him out individually from any other bobsledder. And the geography of bobsledding has changed radically in the last 10 or 12 years. So Francesco Friedrich, unbeaten at the top level in either discipline in the last three seasons. Completed the perfect season in the two-man bob, won all eight races, won five out of eight of the four-man, 
17 man box he hasn't been defeated since January 2017 January 2018 so there are your podium finishes on the far right Justin Cricks with his crew Oscars Melbardis on the right of the Latvians and Francesco Fujic with Torsten Margus's big arm around his shoulders our world champion well, somehow we're going to try and squeeze 12 big men into one small photo frame. This is well, we're at widescreen, otherwise we'll be missing half of them by now. Francesco Fujic, the world champion. Oscars keeper managed the silver medalists. And Justin Cripps and his boys take bronze. And that is it for our coverage for the 2018-19 BMW IBSF season. My huge thanks to everybody who's been part of the coverage. The IBSF TV crew from director Martin Pastrata down, John Morgan here, and to everybody else who's been in the booth all season long. On behalf of them, I'm Martin Hayden saying thank you for joining us at whatever ungodly hour it's been. We will see you next year for much more action and more record speeds. Enjoy your summer.